Hello there, everyone. My name's Andrew. And I'm Cassie. And this is the Culips English Podcast. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Culips. This is Catchword, the series for intermediate and advanced English learners, where we teach you idioms, phrasal verbs, and expressions that will help improve your English listening and speaking. And today I'm joined by my co host, Cassie. Hello there, Cassie. Hi, Andrew, and hey, listeners. So, everyone, we've got a great vocabulary lesson lined up for you today. The topic Is how to talk about pricey or expensive things. And Andrew and I will teach you two idiomatic expressions that are perfect to use when you're talking about buying something that is overpriced or, in your opinion, too expensive. Exactly. Now, the two key expressions that we'll teach you in this episode are to cost an arm and a leg and to pay through the nose. A very body oriented <laughs> vocabulary lesson today, Cassie.、Yes. Now, we use these idioms all the time when we're talking about paying a lot of money for something, which unfortunately, at least to me, seems to happen far too often these days, also. So maybe it's a very relevant time to teach these two expressions. <laughs> it's because you're an adult, Andrew. Adults always have so many expenses. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay, well, we'll get started with this lesson in just a moment. But before we do, guys, we want to let you know that there is a transcript and study guide for this episode available to all Culips members. We've designed the practice exercises that are in the guide specifically to teach you the important parts of this lesson that will help build your English fluency and help your English sound more natural. To learn about all the details and to become a Culips member and get the study guide, visit culips.com. We also want to say a huge thank you to all of the Culips members out there who support the work that we do at Culips and keep allowing us to make new episodes and English lessons each and every week. Guys, we really appreciate your support and we couldn't do Culips without you. Now, with that being said, Cassie, I think it's time to get started with our lesson for today. And the first key expression that we're going to teach everyone is to cost an arm and a leg. Okay. And when we say this expression very quickly, it almost just sounds like one word, I think, Cassie. So I'm going to say it very quickly so everyone can hear me say it at a natural speed. It is to cost an arm and a leg. To cost an arm and a leg. For whatever reason, it just flows really smoothly. And we use this expression to talk about things that are really expensive.、Uh, of course, what determines if something is expensive or cheap is subjective. So it really depends on your income, right? If you're a really, really rich person, Well, then maybe something isn't expensive to you. But if you are a poorer person, then maybe something could be very expensive to you. It is subjective. But in your opinion, if you think that something is really expensive or you feel like it costs too much money, then you can say that that thing costs an arm and a leg. It's like you have to pay money for something, but then you also have to give your arm. <laughs> To the seller, and you also have to give your leg to the seller. It's like so expensive that you're almost sacrificing some of your body to buy that thing. Yeah, that's exactly right, Andrew. I really like this expression because I think just hearing it, you can easily understand the meaning. You know, if it's so expensive that It's as pricey as, you know, sacrificing an arm and a leg, wow, you know, it must be. Really expensive. Yeah, because think about it, Cassie. If somebody came up to you and they were like, I want to buy your arm, would you sell your arm for any amount of money? I don't think I would. I would never want to do that. That's a kind of deal that I'm not willing to make. So that just means that, you know, our arms and our legs are very precious to us and we 
don't want to lose them, right? So if something costs an arm and a leg, it means like it's so expensive that to buy that thing, you really have to make a big sacrifice to your pocketbook or to your wallet. Exactly. Well, there's not really too much else to say about this idiom. It's pretty straightforward. So I think we can listen to a couple of conversation examples now. And why don't we check out the first one? Let's do it. Is that a new sweater? It looks great. I love that color on you. Thanks. Yeah, I got it last weekend. Do you mind if I ask where you got it? I'd love to get my boyfriend a sweater just like it. Actually, I bought it at the department store downtown. Usually I don't shop there because everything costs an arm and a leg, but I bought this on sale so it wasn't too expensive. The sale ends soon though, so you should go as soon as possible. Good tip. Thanks. So in that example, we heard a couple of friends talking about a new sweater that was bought by one of the friends at a department store downtown. And that guy doesn't usually shop at the department store because the items there are really expensive. It's, uh, I guess, maybe a bougie department store and <laughs> the shops are expensive and everything in the department store costs an arm and a leg. Everything there costs an arm and a leg. So he says he doesn't usually shop there, but there was a sale and it was a good sale. So he went there and bought, bought a sweater. I've been to plenty of department stores and I can concur with this conversation. Some of the items there do cost an arm and a leg. Exactly. Yes. Uh, it's a great expression to use when you're describing a store where the items are very expensive indeed. Cassie, why don't we check out the second conversation example? Okay. Do you think you could give me a ride home later? Mm, sure, no problem. But what happened to your car? It's a long story, but it broke down on the way to work this morning, so it's in the shop now, and it's not going to be ready until next week. Ah, that's terrible. But that's not even the worst thing. When I was calling the tow truck from the side of the road, I dropped my phone and it smashed to pieces. So today really cost me an arm and a leg. I had to pay for a tow truck, a car repair, and now a new phone too. Well, don't worry, I won't charge you for the ride home. All right, well, in this conversation, we have two friends and one friend is having a really bad day. Their car broke down, and on top of that, their phone broke, and now they have to pay for all of these repairs, tow truck fees, and a new phone. So, in other words, this day was a complete wash, and it's going to cost this friend an arm and a leg. All of those fees together are really going to put a dent in his bank account. I like the way that he talked about that. He said, today really cost me an arm and a leg, meaning that he had to pay a lot of money for different things in the day. Like it was a really expensive day. Cassie, you used a really interesting expression just a moment ago, and I think we should touch on it quickly before we move on. You said that the character from that example, that his day was a wash. Said it was a wash. What does it mean if something is a wash, like if his day is a wash? It means nothing good happened on that day. And when I think of this phrase, I think of like, you kind of wish you could just wash that day from your memory in a sense. That's a good way to think about it. Just a really bad day. Just a really bad day, a very expensive day that ended up costing him an arm and a leg. Well, everyone, I think it's time for us now to move on to the second key expression for this episode, which interestingly enough is also about paying for expensive things or things that cost a lot of money and also is about a body part. The first expression was to cost an arm and a leg and the second key expression is to pay through the nose, to pay through the nose. 
And it has exactly the same meaning, pretty much. To pay through the nose means to pay a lot of money in order to buy something. Cassie, do you have any idea why we say this? Why do we say pay through the nose? Do you have any guess? I have no idea. Can you enlighten me? Well, actually, it's not really understood by anyone. I did a lot of Googling to try and research and to find why English speakers say pay through the nose. There are many theories, but linguists aren't really sure exactly the origin of this expression. However, one interesting theory is that it dates back to the ninth century, so hundreds of years ago, when the Vikings came and conquered Britain from Denmark. So the Vikings came from Denmark and they conquered、uh, Britain. And the Danes established what was called a nose tax. And that was just a way of saying that every person had to pay a tax. So they put this tax on the people that were living in Britain. And so the story goes if you didn't pay the nose tax, then they would slash your nose open. <gasps> a very brutal price to pay for not paying that tax. And so. You know, that might just be legend or it could be true. Linguists aren't really sure, but they, that might be the origins for this expression to pay through the nose. It kind of goes back to, you know, something costing an arm and a leg, right? Just like you wouldn't want to sell your arm or your leg, you probably wouldn't want to sell your nose either. And you wouldn't want to have your nose slashed open by not paying that tax. Brutal. Possible origin to this expression. It makes me thankful to be living in happier times in the modern days, Cassie, where I don't have to pay a nose tax. Shall we get started by listening to our first example conversation? Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go on a trip to New York City this summer. Do you have any restaurant recommendations you could give me? Yeah, totally. There are so many great restaurants there. You're going to love it. Make sure to avoid the tourist traps around Times Square. The food is、uh, so so, and you'll be paying through the nose. I'll write you a list of my favorite places and send it to you in a bit. Ah,、oh, that would be perfect. Thanks. So, in that conversation example, we hear two friends talking about dining in New York City, and one of the friends. Cautions against eating in Times Square, which is a famous tourist destination in New York City. And the reason why she recommends that you shouldn't eat in Times Square is that it's a tourist trap. So, a tourist trap is a kind of restaurant or attraction that is designed for tourists, and usually locals don't go to those places. Uh, locals know that they're overpriced and not really authentic, and it's just not the kind of place that locals go to. Usually, only tourists go there. And so, the reason that you should avoid the tourist trap restaurants in Times Square is that the food is not so great, and also they're very expensive. We heard the friend say that if you visit those restaurants, you'll pay through the nose. So, it's very, very expensive compared to. Uh, other restaurants that locals go to. I can actually prove this personally. I've been to a restaurant in Times Square since my hometown is not too far from New York. And the food was, it was better than so so, but it was definitely much more expensive than you'd find even just a few blocks away. Do you think it was a tourist trap that you visited? Most definitely. The restaurant was themed after a famous movie,、uh, Forrest Gump, for anybody who cares. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, Cassie, let's listen to the final conversation example for this episode and our final example with our key expression to pay through the nose. Okay, let's go. How's the apartment hunt coming along?、Mm, not bad. We're going to go look at a few places tomorrow afternoon on the south side. The south side? You'll pay through the nose if you want to live there. 
I know, rent is really expensive, but it's so convenient and only like a 15-minute walk from my office. It might be worth the extra cost to live in a place that's so close. In this example, one woman is talking about her hunt for a new apartment. She mentions that she's going to go apartment hunting in the south side. Usually if you live in a city, you know, you have different districts of the city. Maybe uh, the south side, north side, west side, east side. But apparently the south side is a pretty ritzy area. It's a rich neighborhood. Rent is steep, costs a lot to live there. And uh, her friend says, if you move there, you're going to be paying through the nose. So if you move there, rent will not be cheap. Exactly. And this is a really, really common way to talk about rent or even neighborhoods that are expensive to live in, right? That friend said, you'll pay through the nose if you want to live there. So I think maybe not only is the rent expensive in that neighborhood, but maybe also the cost of living is expensive. Like the grocery stores are expensive and maybe the restaurants and cafes. Everything is a little bit more expensive in that more expensive neighborhood. So everyone, that is going to bring us to the end for today. And we hope that you enjoyed this episode and were able to learn a lot with us here today. Nice job on getting in your daily dose of English listening practice, by the way. Keep it up. You're doing exactly what you need to do to improve your fluency. Andrew and I taught you two idiomatic expressions today about how to describe things that you pay a lot of money for. Now it's your turn to practice using these expressions. You can practice by making some example sentences and leaving them on our discussion forum or comment section on our website, qlips.com. If you enjoy QLips and find it useful for helping you build your English skills, we'd love it if you could support us by leaving a five-star rating and a positive review on your favorite podcast app like Apple Podcasts or really whatever app you use. You could also follow us on Instagram or YouTube or tell your friends who are learning English to check us out and that would really go a long way to support us as well. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode and we'll talk to you then. Bye everyone. Goodbye.